Hello, I'm Kieran Lynch, and welcome to Overcast, the Chocolate Sheep Podcast. Each episode will bring you insights, advice, and technical updates for the sheep industry. As we head into the autumn period, we need to consider our grazing rotations, and we're joined in this week's episode by Dr. Philip Crichton to discuss some key aspects of grazing management this autumn. Philip discusses the closing plan on farms and how it may need to be modified on farms where supplies are tight. We discuss how clover and multi-species wards may have to be managed slightly differently at closing to get the best out of those wards in the future. Finally, we finish up with Philip encouraging farmers to review the fertiliser management strategies this year and assess what worked well or what needs changing for the coming season. We start off, however, with Philip discussing the current grazing conditions, grass supply on farms, as well as some of the challenges this autumn. Yeah, so I suppose, Kieran, uh, conditions have been have been good, I suppose, as you said, depending on, on, on where you are in the country. Um, you know, the kind of prolonged dry weather we had there, July, August, it was poor from a grass production, grass growth point of view, but it, it was good from a utilisation point of view. I suppose we have to take some positives from it. Um, that obviously has 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 led to its challenges now in terms of grass availability. Um, it's quite variable. Again, where covers were very low, um, when, when, well, I suppose when, when, when the rain did come in those areas that were more severely affected, it has taken quite a while for, 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 for that grass growth to rebound. In areas where maybe it wasn't overly restricted, it has resulted in, in, in a good flush of growth and, you know, relatively normal conditions at this point now. Um, but as you say, it, 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 in general, the areas where grass growth stayed good, utilisation was excellent because conditions were good um, and has, has set up farms very well. In areas where it was very dry, you know, it has been very challenging and will continue to be very challenging because of, of much lower covers than normal. As you said, look, it was one of the positive conditions did hold good, I suppose, in the more north and westerly counties. They really did benefit from that. Look, at grass growth, it, it picked up again in September in a lot of areas. We did get a bit of a bump. It's probably fair to say, though, for a lot of farms, we're not going into the autumn with as heavy a covers as usual. No, definitely not. And I suppose, um, as we said there, you know the, the the drier conditions there really restricted growth. I suppose another thing that is is different this year and and look, I think we talked about it on the last podcast. Um, you know the levels of fertilizer applied this year. You know nitrogen or compound fertilizer, you know has has significantly reduced, and and that's for obvious reasons. Um, with regard to cost and availability. Um, but I suppose what we're seeing is is that there's there's a lot of variation there in terms of growth rates um leaving aside the weather conditions um where you know very significantly less levels of, of fertilizer have been applied um we are seeing lower growth rates than normal and as a result um i suppose lower much lower average farm covers and um, if we look at pasture based there, there's a lot of variation around the, the amount of grass that people are carrying into the autumn and it is in places quite a bit back on, on, on where we'd normally expect it, I suppose. And look, as we said, there, there was other issues there, but there seems to be a trend emerging that that, that is a, a, a common theme right across the board. Um, mm-hmm. And that could have implications, I suppose, in terms of what we do over the next couple of months. Um, and, and it will have to be different, I suppose, to what we'd normally do. No, it's, it's certainly the feedback we're getting. It, it became more obvious as you went into August, September, it was less bounce back in that there was less coverage on the ground. I suppose the other thing, Philip, is we have to be conscious there is probably in some cases more lambs left on farms this year than previous years. And I suppose the consequence of all that is it's going to have a big impact on what we do know over the next couple of weeks and particularly how we look at our closing plan on farms. Yeah, so um I suppose apart from the, the fertilizer prices has been high, obviously the, the concentrate prices have been very high as well. And I suppose people were Slower to to feed lambs, uh, much you know, lower levels of feed going into 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 lambs, and it was it's ironic that that's what we would have been talking about a lot of times, you know, trying to maximise grass in the diet. But unfortunately, um, you know, where where sufficient grass wasn't there, it's it's kind of you can't have it both ways. If you if you reduce your concentrates a lot and you reduce your fertiliser a lot, then you're not going to have enough grass there to to to, to plug the difference either, and. I suppose the, the situation we're facing now is that maybe lamb tribe hasn't been as good um, and there is more lambs left on farms. And it's really, we're going to have to look at prioritising um, 
you know, again, you would have spoken about it there on, on, on previous episodes, you know, prioritizing your finishing lamb groups. So trying to pull out lambs that are getting close to finishing and prioritize putting feed into them to get them gone. We may have to assess and look at is there an option there to get rid of some store lambs to reduce demand. I suppose priority now really has to shift to, um, you know, having enough grass there for the yos. As we, you know, this week now there'll be a lot of rams starting to go out. Probably some going out already, and over the next fortnight or so, the bulk of rams will be going out for the mid-season flocks. Um, we have to make sure that what grass is there is is made available to 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 not have any negative impact on 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 them in terms of that's going to have a a knock-on effect for the entire year next year if we if we leave yaws restricted that's going to you know reduce litter sizes it's going to leave yaws going into the winter in a poor body condition score which we know is, is going to be much harder then to bring back up before lambing and if they go out at lambing time with, with poor condition then that's going to have a knock-on effect for milk yield in the spring so we really have to be keeping an eye on all the consequences of, of, of what's going on at the minute and try and tailor the plan as best as we can to, to each farm circumstances in terms of what grass growth is there what lambs are left what condition the yaws are in um, and and make decisions around that then look I, again we're talking very general terms here a lot of this is farm specific there will be farms yeah. with adequate cover stock rates to suit maybe a lot of lambs gone where it's not an issue but you have the other extreme and I suppose if, if I take that point and look at it really at a minimum Philip we're looking at trying to maintain that yaw flock out for another six to eight weeks depending on the rams turned out obviously but you're looking at that kind of window at the very minimum getting that stretch with a good run of grass in front of them. Ideally, it'll go longer, but you need that at a minimum. So that's going to have an impact on supply. So I suppose the first thing is to check well, what's available. How will that have an impact on our closing plans? So or a regular closing plan, maybe we'll outline that first and then we can kind of discuss how do you tweak that to suit. Yeah, so I suppose, <clears throat> I suppose our regular closing plan and people are sick of me talking about this at this stage, but you know, having our our, our autumn closing plan to, to to plan for spring grass for your typical mid season lambing flock, you know, it's it's looking at maybe twenty percent of the farm closed and and rested from the end of October, and um, moving to about forty percent by the middle of November, sixty percent the end of November, and then you're kind of eighty percent by mid December, and then again, you know, it's going to be farm specific. Um, whether sheep are going to sheds or forage crops or deferred grass or just feeding outside, whatever. Everybody has, has their own different ways of doing things. Um, but I suppose the, the risk this year is is that, again, look, at it, it's, it's anecdotal in places, but we are seeing that there is lower grass covers uh, for those that are measuring. Um, the risk is is that we're going to move through the farm much faster than normal. So where we'll, where we'll be building our kind of normal cover and, and we'll be getting to a peak of maybe 40 days ahead, um, you know, there by by kind of middle of October, and we start bringing it down. Um, as we go through that closing plan, in a lot of cases at the moment, it might be only 25, 30 days ahead. So we're, we're already behind where we'd normally be. Um, and the implica- impact of that could be that um, you know, we're going to move through the farm faster, which in one way, yes, um, it would it would actually mean that we'd be closing larger areas of the farm faster but the, I suppose the, 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 the opposite side of that is that there could be an even bigger temptation to if we're going through the farm faster to start regrazing areas of the farm again because there's not enough feed in front of the sheep and that's why I suppose we have to take a, 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 the wider view of if, if there's extra lambs there that's probably one reason why there's less grass available because there's more mouths to feed every day um, and if that continues and there's no action taken, that's only going to bring the, the cover down even faster. You'll move through the farm faster. Um, and, 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 and you know, there is going to be an issue then. So it, it's about identifying where you're at now. And as I say, that kind of 40 days ahead is, is kind of the target. And if that's lower than that, then it's 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 what are you going to do to try and uh, adjust that to, to, to try and stick as close as possible to that normal closing plan? Look, we, we discussed this before, so we did. Within that closing plan, there is a bit of flexibility, but probably the one area there's no flexibility on, Philip, is that first 20 or 40% of crown closing. It, that's the vital areas for stock or turnout to get us through next March. Now, we can make some allowance, yeah, maybe yeah. some of the rest of it, but mm-hmm. you know, the importance of maybe keeping that close, if you have to sacrifice something, you, you sacrifice that later ground. Yeah, and I suppose that, <clears throat> that 40%, the first 40% that we always talk about, the reason that that's so important is that, you know, in October and even early November, 
will still have reasonably good grass growth rates. So at the moment, your typical growth rates there are probably hovering around 40, 45 kilos a day. Even by the time you get to early November, you know, that could still be around 20. So you're growing grass every day that, that, that you have a field graze and it has that time to build cover before the winter. And once you hit end of November into December and January, your growth rates are going to be really minimal. So if you don't have that first stage is done um, and we say, right, we're going to take a chance, we're going to close a bit later, there's, there's no real opportunity to build any covers and you're leaving everything to happen then when things start warming up in February and March. And I suppose... The, the, the thing that we have to remember again this year then is, you know, that yes, fertilizer this year is very dear. Fertilizer next year isn't going to be any cheaper, um, you know, and availability could even be an issue. So we don't want a situation where we're restricted in, 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 in grass due to something that we've done from a management point of view. Because, again, the alternative then is, is feeding a lot of extra meal, which also has gone up in price. So it's about trying to do everything we can to have grass available. And if we have to supplement then you know, it's at a lower level than 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 the alternative. So, like, uh, we'll, we'll just take that one a step further. If you had even supplement Philip towards the tail end of the mating season, just straight after breeding before housing, that's still a better option than regrazing that fit by early paddocks. Yeah. So, if you're going to have to put in supplement, <clears throat> the time to put in supplement is that kind of mid-pregnancy, you know, period where <clears throat> where the demand is, is is about half um what it would be after lambing. So. Thankfully, I suppose, the, the way grass growth went this year, you know, we had a fairly good spring in terms of grass growth, particularly, uh, you know, end of April into May there, there was fairly good um, levels of, of, of silage and hay conserved, um, which means that on most farms, there shouldn't be an issue in terms of, of winter feed. So if it means that we have to start maybe supplementing yours know, that little bit earlier than we'd normally do, even with, with, with silage, if, you know, if, if things are really tight, you know, a small level of supplementation, even in terms of concentrates, that's still going to be a much cheaper option than uh, if, 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 if we have to put that in after lambing. One aspect we didn't just touch on, but it's no harm recovered. In terms of graze outs, Philip, and how late we graze some of the fields, you know, our graze outs obviously is important too. That's going to have an impact on grass quality next spring. But for those maybe to have some companion forages in or have tried to establish clover this year, would you approach that any differently in the regular grass ward? Yes, that's a good point, Kieran. Um, and it's what's something we do need to make a little bit more clearer, maybe, is there's been a huge uptake in, in interest, I suppose, of, of incorporating clover into swords this year for obvious reasons. Um, and thankfully, again, look, the conditions around May time, um, when, you know, we'd be kind of saying May into June um, is the ideal time on sheep farms to, to be oversown clover. You know, we had warm mice conditions in a lot of cases. There was a good, a good, um, a good strike, a good take of the clover in the swords. We do have to manage that a little bit differently um, in terms of the, the autumn closing. So if you have a field that you oversawed with clover this year or if you reseeded with clover even, the clover plant in the 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 you know the the first season um really needs as much light um to develop its stolon network. Um so what 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 you don't want happening there actually is to close that field off quite early in the in the rotation in the closing rotation planner because the chances are then that you know you're going to build a canopy quite 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 quickly so it's the opposite of what we want to do in general across the farm what what we want to actually do with those oversown paddocks in particular and um, because you know they tend to be a thicker sward than than a fresh reseed is to maybe leave them that little bit later into the into the rotation, uh, the closing rotation, to, to carry a slightly lower cover of grass over the winter to get more light down to the base of that sward to, to strengthen that stolon network, to let them to, to, to develop um, so that next year um, the, the clover content of the sward will be improved because there's a stronger, more widely dispersed stolon network, which is then where the clover can develop from. Um, and also then obviously there'll be more rhizomes in that to fix nitrogen as well because of that and that should help in terms of reducing our nitrogen um, <clears throat> our nitrogen demand I suppose from the point of view of, of other companions you know so the, the likes of the herbs or, or even multi-species swords you know there would have been people putting multi-species this year as well you know again a combination of, of, of renewed interest due to the, the fertiliser prices and also there was the multi-species scheme 
I suppose the one thing we need to remember about the, the herbs in particular um, is that in, 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 in less than ideal conditions, so I suppose in wetter conditions, um, you need to be that little bit more careful in terms of grazing them out, that you don't um, overgraze or, or, or cause damage to the growing points of the herbs. So it's, it's a little bit like the, you know, they can have quite a, a hollow stem on them and that. And if you graze them too tight um, in wet conditions, you know, water will get down into that and weaken the root network of them and you could end up with persistency issues. So again, and also the, the, the general advice will be that you don't graze those too late into the winter. So they're probably maximum, again, middle of that closing rotation, not the end of that closing rotation in terms of giving them the chance to to, to replenish root reserves to, um, so that they, they remain viable in this world compared to grazing them later. The later you graze them, the more potential to weaken that root network and, and their persistency will suffer as a result. So in both of them cases, they really need to be, to an extent, taken out of the rotation and managed separately. Yeah, you need to, you know, you really need to be managing them to suit the, to suit the requirements of them. So they need that little bit more minding. There are plenty of things to consider. I'll, I'll put a link up in the description to the closing planner. I think it's just a good template to have on your farm. But maybe if we go back to kind of where you started with it. It's a great time to assess the play and just put a plan in place. Even if you haven't already done so, there's still time to think about what's happening for the next couple of weeks. I suppose just the last thing that we might talk about, I suppose, is just we're getting to the end of the, the grazing year now. Um, you know, it'll be a good time maybe to reflect on, on, on what has worked. What has worked well this year, look, there was a lot of changes and that had to be made. I suppose the big one being reductions in, in, in fertilizer, particularly nitrogen applied. And look, we all want to reduce our nitrogen, um, both from a cost and from a, an environmental point of view. But I suppose, you know, there's a little bit of learning there in terms of, you know where did where did the reductions work well? Where did the reductions maybe leave us leave us a bit tight? You know we have an opportunity now to reflect on on what we've done in general over the last year or so, and you know make a few notes, make a plan maybe of what we can do differently next year, um, and and that goes across the board for all different aspects. But I suppose the fertilizer is going to be the big one. You know price doesn't look like it's going to come down much for next year. Concentrate prices are still high. So that will have an impact, as I said earlier. We can't really have it both ways if we reduce our concentrates and our fertilizers together. Um, that can lead to pinch points. So we need to maybe refine the plan a little bit for next year. I think it's, I think it's a point well made and it's a good time of year to reflect back on where them challenging points were and what are you going to do different for the coming season. Exactly, Kieran, yeah. Phil, good having you on. Appreciate your time. Thank you. OK, we're going to leave it there for this week as Philip's highlights some very important things considering your grazing rotations and it's really a plan for next spring we're looking at at the moment. I've included a link to the autumn closing planner. It's in the description of this podcast. It's used for reference and useful tasks to complete on your farm. That's it for me for this episode. Again, for updates from our sheep program, keep an eye on our Twitter page at Chocolate Sheep. I'm Kieran Lynch. Thanks for joining us. Don't forget to subscribe and get notified of any new episodes.